The Vietnam Veterans Memorial is considered to be one of the most iconic monuments in the country, but organizers didn't think they'd see their plans to honor those who served come to fruition. Before groundbreaking on March 26, 1982, the monument was mired in almost as much controversy as the war it set out to memorialize. The Vietnam War was the most divisive event of the 20th century. It pulled people apart, it pulled families apart. It would take the nation a while to recover. There was a feeling that uh, it was time to forget about it and move on, and which made perfect sense. But I'm a combat veteran. I could not allow them to forget the veterans. I decided that my mission in life was to build a national Vietnam Veterans Memorial with the names of those who had given their lives and to try to put it on the mall in Washington, D.C. We decided that we would have a competition open to any American aged 18 years old or older. Every entry had to have one thing, a way to display the 58,000 names of the casualties from the Vietnam War. We had a jury of a very well-respected architects. When they saw this design, they kept coming back to it because all the other designs were complex. A young Yale architectural student, Maya Ying Lin, has won the competition to design Washington's newest memorial. To me, it looked like a bat or maybe a boomerang. I couldn't understand how in the world this was going to work. However, because I respected the people on the jury so much, they stood up and applauded and said, this is a work of genius uh, and I, we can't wait to build it. Probably two days after the design was announced, I got a call from a paralyzed veteran in Vietnam, and he just said, look, this is outrageous. This is a black hole in the ground. One of the opponents to this were asking, what kind of inscription do you think we should have on the wall? And he said, I got an idea for you. Put this on there, Scruggs. Designed by a gook. Had the design been done by a regular, you know, six foot four, white guy with blue eyes, we might have had a lot less controversy. We needed to make a compromise with these people. Ultimately, we had a meeting and everybody agreed that this could be modified properly with a statue and a flagpole. And then the opponent said, no, that's not enough. I was a White House fellow at the time and was assigned to represent the White House at meetings to discuss the future of the memorial. We had already secured the approvals we required the opponents of the memorial were attempting to stop the permit from being issued. They were all calling the Secretary of the Interior, logging his phone with messages and then demanding that he not give us the construction permit. So all of a sudden, all this work was up in smoke. We had run out of ammunition, except for one thing. His name was Tom Shaw, and he went up to the Interior Department and he said, the White House is fully behind this and the president, and that we really needed to get this done. We didn't want to have um, this delayed any further. I didn't have formal approval, but, but I did have a sense from the senior staff that they would support me on this. I understood that, that you know, this is a moment in time and we had to move quickly and we had to make a decision, and it was the right thing to do. We got the permit, and within days, we had construction crews on the ground. We had bulldozers tearing holes all over the mall, and we made such a mess, nobody could ever stop the construction. Somehow, we prevailed. The memorial changed everything for the Vietnam veterans. All of a sudden, everyone's proud to be a Vietnam veteran. Everybody shakes their hands, and you get to stand up during baseball games. Now all Americans can agree that Vietnam veterans deserve recognition and appreciation for their sacrifices, and that is why the Vietnam Veterans Memorial stands here today. And in 1982, the memorial was dedicated to 50,000 Vietnam veterans there, and they embraced the wall, the nation embraced the wall. It was pretty apparent that uh, this is going to have a profound impact on what needed to happen, which was to heal the wounds of the war. 